Greetings, beloved. I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope everyone is having a great to, great day today on this Wednesday, man. Um, really excited about this message that the Holy Spirit is going to lead us in tonight. Before we get started, let us bow our heads for a brief moment of prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you for your love and your mercy. We ask that your word will go forth today, all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, beloved, listen. I want to say this first before we get started. I want to ask a question. Um, and this is a good question. In the old days, you know, when you were living wrong, when you weren't living right in the church and your parents and your grandparents and uncles and aunts and everybody used to talk to you about getting right. You know, you knew you were doing wrong. You knew you weren't living right. You knew you had some changes to make. You just weren't right with the Lord. There wasn't really much arguing with whether or not you were right with the Lord. You knew you had fallen short. If you knew you were in a sinful state, especially those of us who were doing stuff in the back, in the booth, in the corner that nobody could see, you knew you were wrong. And you understood that. Wasn't much debate about that. <clears throat> but nowadays, it seems like a lot of times, a lot of us in the church, and I say us, including me, a lot of us in the church, a lot of us in the body of Christ tend to get mad sometimes with ministers and preachers and teachers who try to teach a holiness message or what we're going to talk about tonight, it being renewed message. And we have to understand, beloved, that the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord and say with Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. It's not just confessing with your mouth. It's also the belief in your heart. And what we all know is when you truly believe something in your heart, the Bible says also, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It also says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flows the issues of your life. So if you believe in your heart, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if you believe in your heart, the gospel of Jesus Christ, then your life will show it. And if your life doesn't show it, if you truly believe, but you have issues and things that you're dealing with, baggage from the past, demons that you're trying to fight, that you just can't be defeat, that you can't defeat, then at least own that. Accept that. Go to the Lord humbly. Go to friends and family so they can pray with you, pray for you. Go to leaders in the church so they can cover you so that you can be victorious. Spend time on your knees, but don't act arrogantly as if you don't need to change because you're under grace. Don't take scripture out of context and twist scripture to fit your own fleshly desires because we don't want to change. And listen, we've all been there. Y'all know when I preach and teach, I preach and teach from a place of been there, done it. There's nobody watching can tell me anything about being in that world, living in that world, being tricked into thinking while in that world that as a Christian, I'm okay. Doing things that I know is against the word, that I know is against the Bible, that I know is against the Holy Spirit of God. Doing things that I know when I'm doing these things, I'm not be, I'm not in a renewed state. And the question is, I guess, <clears throat> if you're not renewed, as the Bible tells us to be renewed, are you pleasing unto God? I won't even talk about salvation, you know, snatching people getting snatched out of God's hand. The Bible said no one can snatch you out of God's hand. We understand that. We understand that if you're born and you believe and you're born again, then you're a born believer and you're born again and there's nothing, no one can do about that. Okay, so we won't even deal with that tonight. Tonight is not a once save, always save conversation. Let's just assume, let's just assume that once you're saved, you're always saved. If you're saved, if you're truly saved, but you're living like the world, if you haven't been renewed in the spirit of your mind, are you pleasing unto God? So we're going to take it to a whole nother level now. We're going to take it away from where you can just argue about being saved. Are you pleasing unto God? Like, are you a man behind God's own heart? Because believe me, every man in the Bible that was a man behind God's own heart at some point submitted themselves totally unto God. Even the worst of the worst. David, the worst of the worst. Abraham was a liar, but he submitted himself fully unto God. Peter, Paul, uh, everybody in the Bible, um, Isaac, 
Jacob, all the great men in the Bible that had issues, they were submitted unto God. And even in their sin, they knew in their sinful state that they had sinned. They went to God for forgiveness. They asked God to forgive them and they submitted themselves unto God. No one arrogantly acted like, okay, I'm doing this, just, just what I'm doing. It's just me. It's just how I am. I don't need to be renewed. I don't need to be renewed in my mind. I don't need to change anything. I just need to say that I believe in Jesus. That's incorrect, brother and sisters. But not even to get into debate about that. I'll say that once saved is always saved. We'll agree for the purpose of this conversation. That's the case. But are you pleasing unto God? The Bible says in the book of what is Ephesians fifth chapter, it says that you should put off concerning your former conduct, that old man that grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on that new man who's created after God in righteousness and in true holiness. So put off that old sinful man, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, be renewed by the Holy Spirit of God in your mind. As a man think it in his heart, in his mind, so is he. Keep your heart, your mind with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of your life. So be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Putting off that old man that's corrupt according to deceitful worldly lust. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then put on the new man who's created after God and righteousness and true holiness. Do we see what just happened? Pause. Listen to this. So many of us think in the body of Christ, we're born again. We don't have to do nothing else. Like once we're born again, we receive the Holy Spirit of God. We do. But then now we have a job to put off the sinful stuff. That old man, that corrupt man, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and then put on that new man who's created after God in righteousness and in true holiness. So if we were created after God, if we were created to be like God in righteousness and true holiness, if we were created to be renewed in the spirit of our mind and to put on that new man, and we decide not to do that, and we decide to hang on to that former man, that corrupt man, that lustful man, is God pleased? Because at the end of the day, for me, I'm not, I don't serve God because I want him to get, I want to get into heaven. Like getting into heaven is a benefit of my relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right, I said it. Getting into heaven is it's like a given. I know I'm getting into heaven, but getting into heaven is because of my love relationship. I want to please the Father. I don't want to be one that says, I just want to get into heaven. I don't care how God feels about it. I just want to get into heaven. I don't care if my life makes him happy. I, don't, I just want to get in heaven. I don't care if I glorify him and my whole body and my whole spirit, which belongs to him. I don't, I don't care about that. I just want to get into heaven. I'm not that dude. So maybe because I'm not that person, maybe sometimes when I speak, it comes across foreign to some people. I don't care about that. Listen, beloved, I was in the world. And praise be to God, I didn't die in the world. Praise God, I didn't die whoremongering and lusting and parting and tricking and manipulated and being tricked and manipulated and just out there. I mean, thank God I didn't die. Praise God. I always talk about the t-shirts and the stickers. Thank God I didn't die driving around in my truck with a Yes Jesus license plate, valet parked at the club, inside partying, as we say, getting litty. Thank God God didn't take my life in that state. Because had he taken it, honestly speaking, I don't know where I would have been. Because even though I say I was a Christian and I know I love God, at that point in time, there were times where if we're honest, in that world, we chose the world over God. There are times when all of us knew, man, okay, that's enough. Okay, that's enough, bro. It's time to stop. Whatever it is we're doing, okay, that's enough. That's enough. And then we continue doing it because our flesh put all concern the former man, that old man that grows corrupt, according to deceitful fleshly lusts. We wouldn't be renewed in our mind, so we couldn't prove what made God happy. We couldn't do what was right in God's eyes. The Bible also says, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Be not conformed to the world. Be ye transformed by renewing of your mind 
so that you can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Renewing your mind so that you can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Without renewing your mind, without presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the, unto the Lord, without not being conformed to the world, without not being transformed, without renewing your mind, you can't prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And if you can't do that, is God pleased? Like, does God look at you as a man after his own heart? Are you called a friend of God because your faith and your love relationship with God? Are you someone that God has just keep forgetting, forgiving? Like, because remember in the book of Matthew chapter seven, and I say this all the time, and I've said this a couple of times, and a couple of people have had issues with what I said, but it's not me, it's the Bible. See, none of us really know where grace ends and judgment begins. If we're being honest, the things that are revealed belong unto man, but the secret things belong unto the Lord. I'm saying this yes for everybody to hear. If it was a 100% agreed upon popular consensus, there wouldn't be different thought patterns about it in the body of Christ, in the church. There wouldn't be people who feel this way, people who feel this way, people who feel this way, all basing their feelings off of the word. So we can't just say, well, what the word says. We understand what the word says, but different interpretations of the same word give everybody, we've come away with these different understandings. But if it was just etched in stone the, the, where grace ends and holiness starts, or where grace ends and judgment starts, if it was etched in stone, there wouldn't be no need to have conversation. Because it'd be etched in stone, black and white. But that's not how God does it. See, with this grace that we're under, the Holy Spirit of God, the faith that we have now, this relationship that we have with Jesus Christ through our faith requires us to put off, requires us to be renewed. It requires us to make a decision. We're not robots. You know, certain things were done a certain way in the old days in the law. Now God gives us the opportunity to make decisions for ourselves. And with that being said, the question is, what happens when you get to judgment and you've overran your grace? Now, I'm not saying that you can't overrun grace. I'm not saying that. I'm making a point is, beloved. First of all, we should be trying to live in a way that's loving and pleasing and holy unto God that makes him happy. Because if we make him happy, we ain't got to worry about no one on this earth. Remember, I always say, if this vertical relationship is right, we ain't got to worry about the horizontal. Horizontal is going to work itself out if we're vertically correct. But remember, Jesus said in Matthew 7, the last couple of verses, he said, not everyone that says unto me that day, Lord, Lord, shall enter. And beloved, listen to this as I close, because this is very, very serious. Again, my goal is not to debate the Bible. My goal is to try to get us to look at things a way that I wish somebody would have pulled my coattail and helped me look at it. Or there were ministers and preachers teaching the same lesson a different way. I wish that I would have had enough sense to overcome my fleshy lust, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, prize of life, worldly flesh, whatever it is, because all of us have different vices. But whatever you're doing that you know is not right, whatever you're doing that you know is not the fruits of the spirit, I wish I would have had enough sense to listen. My life would probably have been a lot easier, a lot less headed, a lot less tribulations, a lot less trials, a lot less heartaches, a lot less losses. So for me, it's for us to live victorious on this earth, restored on this earth, as well as in heaven. Looking forward to the promises of life that now is and that to come in heaven. But the life that now is now, life and life more abundantly now. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world now. But remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, there are going to be many are going to come unto me in that, in that day and says, Lord, Jesus, have I not cast out devils in your name? Jesus, have I not prophesied in your name? Lord Jesus, in your name, have I not done many great works? And Jesus is going to say from, to them, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice iniquity. Some virgins say lawlessness. Some, some virgins say sin. Some virgins say who live in a life of sin. The fact of the matter is, <clears throat> excuse me, 
if Jesus said it, how serious is it? Like if Jesus said it, Jesus Christ, if he said it, how serious is it? Who wants to play Russian roulette with their soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? At that point, it's going to be too late. So when I come up to you saying, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, being not conformed to this world, being transformed, renewing your mind so that you can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's me saying it directly from Scripture. And that's just saying, beloved, please, with everything that's in us as Christian, as children of God, let us seek to live holy unto God. Let us seek to live in a place that's pleasing unto God. Let us seek to live in a place that the Holy Spirit of God is truly leading us and truly guiding us. We're not quenching the Holy Spirit of God. We're not grieving the Holy Spirit of God. We're minding the Holy Spirit of God. We're allowing the Holy Spirit of God to change us. We've been renewed in the spirit of our mind. We've been changed in our heart. So now we keep in our heart with all diligence, knowing that out of our heart flows the issues of our life. And the issues of our life are life, and life more abundantly because our heart is filled with the Holy Spirit. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I think righteousness in my heart, so I'm living righteous. And I know at that point I'm pleasing unto God. There don't have to be no question. Now, listen, beloved, I understand. All the worldly lusts, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, prize of life, deceitful lust, sin, all the things that we all have done, some of us are still doing, regardless of what it is, regardless of what that sin is, it feels good. That's his job. His job is to, to be pleasing to the flesh. His job is at that point in time to be pleasing to the flesh. But what will a man give to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And then once you lose your soul, what will you be trying to give in exchange to get your soul back? Beloved, no one wants to hear it's too late. No one wants Jesus to say, depart from me, I never knew you. No one wants to say, after watching this teaching tonight, and whenever your judgment day comes and you haven't done some internal reflection, you haven't checked whether or not you've been grieving the spirit, whether or not you're quenching the spirit, whether or not you're living according to the fruits of the spirit. You just still kind of want to be a Christian. I'm a Christian, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna get I'm gonna do me. You know, I gotta get the bag, or I gotta do this, or you know, this is just who I am, or this feels good to me, or I gotta have this person, or ain't nothing wrong with a little line, or you know, ain't nobody gonna see this, or you know, I and we go on and on with whatever our different vices is and our different excuses are. But who wants to be the person that doesn't know that uh oh, I just ran out of the grace. And this is the point now where because see, this is the thing. The Holy Spirit of God can't be there when you're doing well. Like if you're sinning and you're operating outside of the spirit of God, God is not involved. Anyone who wants to say, and I put my number at the bottom of all my teachings, please call me, who wants to say that when you're sinning, when you're in your flesh, God is involved with that. Please call me, because that means that you have no clue and no understanding of the things of the spirit. When you're quenching the spirit, when you're grieving the spirit, and then your lifestyle is one that quenches and grieves the spirit to the point now where you don't even consider the spirit. You're just quenching and grieving. That's just who you are. Beloved, you're playing for the other team. Your jersey don't say team Jesus no more. Your mouth may say Jesus, but your heart's not saying Jesus. And if your heart's not saying Jesus and you're not renewed, is God pleased? And if God is not pleased, then in judgment, will you find out that you ran out of grace and you didn't live holy and God is not pleased and things aren't working out for you in judgment the way they, you want them to. Because again, beloved, where you spend eternity really is not my concern. But my concern as a minister is wanting all of us to be in the kingdom of heaven. But at the end of the day, you're gonna stand for judgment for yourself. I'm gonna stand for judgment for myself. I will not be able to say to God, hey, God, can you see Aaron right there? That I, I know him. Can you let him in? Can you let him pass the ropes? Hey, can you get can you get the angel security to let him in? No, that's not how that works. And beloved, who wants to be the one that finds out that, hey, you know, okay, God, okay. 
Maybe I should have listened. Because we can all come up with scriptures to justify what we're doing. We can all come up with scriptures for grace. We can all come up with scriptures. We've all heard scriptures for grace. We've all heard them. We've all heard them analyzed. Some of us right now, my speaking, um, about to go in the comments right now and give me some great scriptures. Okay. Not arguing with you. Not even arguing once holy, once saved, always saved. But the Bible does say that in 1 Corinthians 6, that if you sin after being born again, there's no longer a sacrifice for sin. There's no longer a sacrifice. 1 Corinthians 6, read it. So I just say that, why do we want to take that chance, beloved? I mean, please don't take that chance. All of you guys watching, you know, when I get to heaven, however heaven is, I want to be able to say, I fellowship with all the men and women in the body of Christ because I love all. I don't want to see anybody suffer. I suffered enough, I think, for all of us. So, beloved, let us get right. Let us seek to be pleasing unto God. Not just trying to figure out a way to get into heaven, but let us seek to find a way to be pleasing unto God by renewing our mind, renewing our spirit, man, allowing the Holy Spirit to take lead in our lives working on our love relationship with Jesus Christ, with God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, and with the body of Christ. Look forward to talking to you guys again. I hope you had a great time listening to me this afternoon, this evening. I pray that you guys have a great and blessed rest of this week. I love you in Jesus. Bye-bye.